Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with a new video and for today's video I am going to be showing you guys and going over my results for my February monthly budget. As you guys know, I made a whole video talking about this budget spread as well as all of my other budget spreads that I usually do like my variable income, my sinking funds page and I do actually um, do weekly check-in pages where it is that I check my expenses per week and today we're actually going to be checking for the last week of that as well as giving you guys my result for my monthly budget and how I feel about them. I recently did also start to utilize the last page of the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner a little bit more. So if you guys have not checked out my video all about my debt and my debt payoff plan for the next couple of months, I did make a whole video about this, so go ahead and check that out. I did update you guys as to how I'm going to be tackling my debt for the next couple of months. So go ahead and check that out if you guys have not. But for today, we're going to go ahead and focus on this page. So this is my weekly check-in, and if you guys have not realized or if you guys are wondering where all of these stickers are from they're actually from my Etsy sticker shop so these are some of the stickers that I do offer in my Etsy sticker shop so pretty much all of them and this is what my monthly view looks like I can't believe that February went as fast as it did but I am excited because March is here and I do have my March budget video if you guys are interested I'm actually going to be filming and getting up my March week one check-in and you guys will see why that's even relatable or how that even correlates with this budget results once I show you guys sort of my expenses and my cash envelopes and stuff like that. So if you guys did not know, I did start using the cash envelope system this month. So I do have cash, my cash envelopes like groceries, eating out, my gas for my car, my allowance, and beauty. And I actually do have my cash envelopes that I use for February. So as you guys can see, for my cash envelopes, I do have different categories and I've talked all about the cash envelope system, especially um, for my February cash envelope stuffing video, but I do like to use these from the Budget Mom online as well as on Instagram. And I really like these because they do have sort of the tracker to keep track of what money you've spent and how much money you have left for the month. So. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, as you guys can see, none of these cash envelopes have any money anymore. And the reason being is because I actually did want to do the whole rolling over cash envelope money. So you guys will see that in my week one check-in for my March monthly budget, which should go up right after this video. So stay tuned for that. But I'll go ahead and talk to you guys a little bit more once I'm done checking in. So the last week that we're looking at for this month would be my week five which is from the 24th until the 28th and as you guys can see the categories that I have for my weekly check-in are food gas shopping and unbudgeted and as you guys saw I do have five different cash envelopes but I do group some of them together so for food I would group my groceries and my eating out for gas that's its own section and then for shopping I would group my allowance and my beauty cash envelopes and then unbudgeted of course you guys know that I don't have a budgeted amount for my unbudgeted section so that's sort of its own thing I want to go ahead and bring you guys to week five for me which was from the 24th until the 28th and that was this week so as you guys can see I do have a couple of expenses as well as I did pay a couple of bills so I'm going to start by checking off all of my bills and if you guys are wondering these bill due stickers are actually from my shop which match perfectly to my budget kits so I did already pay Amazon which I had already checked off and I recently paid Spotify because that comes out automatically so then I'm going to be looking at these other labels that I have here which are my different expenses and as you guys can see from this key here I have expenses like food shopping and other okay so first what I want to do is put a no spend sticker so I do have these up on my shop as well and I basically just put them on days that I don't spend any money so either it is for my categories that I have here or bills and I only have one day this week that I didn't spend money which was on the 25th so I'm just going to go ahead and put that there and I like to just add that just because it gives it a little bit more of a me touch to my spread and I don't know it just looks nice and it keeps me going to not spend so I can use the no spend cute stickers 
So I didn't spend any money this day at all. So let me go ahead and bring you guys to the weekly check-in. So our first category that we have here, as you guys can see, is my food category. So let me zoom you guys just a tad. So for my food category, we are counting my groceries and my eating out. So for that, we do count the pink sticker as you guys saw from my key here. So the pink sticker means food. So the food amounts that I have for this week were for Target, which I bought some snacks to have here at home as well as whenever I go to work. And that was a total of $26. And then I went to Porto's, which this came out for my eating out money. This was sort of my birthday brunch and I did spend $18. It actually was a little bit less than that, my actual breakfast brunch sort of food but i ended up buying some potato balls and some i believe guava and cheese strudels if you guys have not tried those from um portos they are amazing wait actually i don't even know if they have portos everywhere or not they have like four here in southern california i believe so for food we have 44 dollars. so for spent i would put 44 dollars I did have $49 left over from the last week, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract that by $49. So that means that I had remaining $5, which essentially means that I was under budget by $5, which is really good. The thing with these budgets is you don't want to be over your budget. If you're under and you have remaining money, that's a really good sign. So next, I'm going to go ahead and go on to gas. But before I go on to gas, I'm going to go ahead and check off these two. So once I do track them, I like to check these off and I'm just using um, an Erin Condren dual tip marker. So mark these off. And as you guys can see, the gas stickers are actually in blue. And I didn't pump any gas this week, as you guys can see. So I'm going to go ahead and put zero. Zero dollars right here. And then I did have $33 remaining last week. So that's the same exact amount that we have for this week because I didn't pump any gas. Next for shopping, which as I showed you guys, that is my beauty as well as my allowance envelope. I didn't have time to get my nails done on my actual birthday, which was the 27th. So I will show you guys what I'm going to be doing with all the extra money right now. But I did end up having a shopping expense and I did take it out of my allowance cash envelope. So that was $8.00. I actually got some Annie Plans printables inserts, and that was $8, right? Yes, $8. I actually got gifted a Filofax personal rings sort of binder situation. I've had a rings sort of agenda planner in the past, but I'm super happy that I have one now. I got gifted one for my birthday, so I wanted to go ahead and buy some printable inserts, and I did want to go ahead and take out that amount for my allowance. So if we subtract the $8 from the 69 that we had last week, I have remaining $61. So this $61 just basically means that I have $61 in both left over in both my beauty and allowance envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off now. And then for the other, I don't have a category for it, but I do like to track it in my monthly view. You guys will see that right now in my budget as well, but I'll go ahead and explain that once I'm done with this. And then I don't have anything from Budgeted, which this is such a great thing for me. I have not had one single unbudgeted expense this month, which is, I'm not going to lie, pretty rare. I always sometimes have um, budgeted expenses that I let's say don't foresee in the beginning of the month but that I do end up having like in the past I have had to pay um, car insurance cart maintenance stuff like that so it's just things that I need but that I don't let's say put them in the beginning of the month which I know a lot of people go through so this is what I have remaining and we'll go ahead and bring those numbers back to my budget right now so let's go ahead and move on to my budget. So that's usually how my weekly check-in 
page work. I really like to do this as well as have the cash envelopes because they both go hand in hand to keep me accountable and not spend as much money as I would spend, let's say if I wasn't checking up on my expenses for the month. I know I would definitely overspend on all of these categories just because obviously I'm not seeing what I'm spending as the weeks go by. Whereas with the cash envelope, you, I've said this before, you're literally seeing the money going away. I don't know, it just sort of triggers me to be like, okay, I need to make this money last and really think about what I'm spending my money on. As you guys can see, I am under on all of these categories. So what I have done for my cash envelopes is I went ahead and rolled over the amount for March. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my cash envelopes just so you guys can see how it looked at the end of the month. So as you guys can see for groceries, I had $3 left over from my target run on the 26th so what i went ahead and did was on the last day of the month i went ahead and just wrote roll over i put negative three which is the month that i had and then that means that i have nothing left in my cash envelope for february because i am rolling that over to march and if you guys are a little bit confused make sure to watch the next video because you guys will see how I rolled over to my March cash envelopes and how that also looks like. So I rolled over $3 for groceries for the next month. For eating out, I rolled over the $2. And I know I could probably keep this money in the cash envelopes or just say within my budget. But what I want to go ahead and do is take part of a savings challenge that the budget mom is actually having. So you guys will hear me talking all about that in my next video. So then for gas, I rolled over $33, which is what I had left, and now I have zero there. For my beauty, I had $24 left for my nails, so I went ahead and rolled that over, leaving me a zero. And then my allowance, I rolled over the $37 that I had left over, which brings me to zero. So although I was under in all of these categories, once I put it in my budget, I'm going to go ahead and put the same exact amount. So this is how it's going to look in my variable section of my February budget. So for my phone bill, and I have my bill here so we can start with the first one. Um, one of my first variable expense that I had here was my phone bill because as you guys know, I mentioned that I had taken out the insurance from that. So I knew that it was going to be a little bit less. So my, I budgeted 125 for that, but the actual amount that I ended up paying for that was 103.22 right here so I'm going to put 103.22 so that means that I was under by 21.78 which is really really good the next for groceries, as you guys saw, I did roll over that money for the next month so I'm going to go ahead and put that the actual was the amount that I budgeted which would leave me at nothing here and this is also going to work with my other cash envelopes like eating out. So I'm going to go ahead and put 60 here for gas. 100. And 80 for allowance. Means nothing here. And 80 for beauty. Obviously, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this for every single month, this is just something that I'm trying out. As I've mentioned in the past, you definitely want to do something that works for you. And I do want to go ahead and try out new things with my budget just to see how that works and maybe even prevents me from spending even more money within the next couple of months. As you guys know, I am currently on a whole debt payoff plan. And I do want to make sure to be able to save as much money as I can. So things like rolling over my money, go ahead and make saving more money possible. So... That's the reason why I'm trying out this whole rolling over my money this month. Obviously, I'll go ahead and update you guys how it's been working for me and you guys will know. I'm really happy that I get to do this in front of you guys so you guys can see if maybe you want to go ahead and include that sort of thing in your budget as well. So then for budgeted, like I mentioned, I didn't have anything. So that's perfect. And then I did not add this category in the beginning of the month and it was for my iTunes. I paid 99 cents for my storage. So I went ahead and added this. The reason why I wanted to go ahead and add this in here is because I do know of this expense which I could possibly classify it as a fixed expense and I know in January I sort of just took the money out of my shopping money because I did have a couple of dollars left but I decided to just went ahead and put it because this is something that I've been paying for it's just something that went over me and I totally forgot about it so so that's the reason why I really like that my stickers are on matte removable paper because 
let's say something does change I can always just go ahead and take out the sticker and bring it down a little bit or whatever it is that I need to fix. So it helps me with the whole fixing things whenever I am not doing things perfect, which is all the time because I'm not perfect. I'm sure none of us are. So that's why I really like that about my stickers as well. So I did went ahead and put that as an other category which is in green and as you guys see I do have it here which I did pay on the 27th so I'm going to check this off because it's the same every month just for more storage in my iCloud I don't know if you guys have that but I have a ton of pictures so I just went ahead and paid for that so that's 99 cents a month so as you guys can see whatever I am not weekly checking for that is considered to me part of an other category so that's why I did put it as an other so that was 99 cents so nothing there so all of my actuals would be the same exact amount that my budgeted amounts were just because my actual amounts are the same exact ones and I didn't have any unbudgeted amount so once again that's going to be 535 99 obviously if you're not doing the whole rolling over cash then you guys would have different amounts here and you probably could possibly be even more under than i was and obviously for my fixed expenses like my bills for the month those numbers really don't change especially because i've been just paying the minimum for most of them except for my bank of america travel because you guys know that that's the card that i want to pay off first as my whole debt payoff plan. As you guys know, I don't enclose my income, but I am thinking of maybe enclosing my social media income, just so you guys can see my whole journey with that, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Honestly, I've been doing my budget with you guys without showing you guys my income for the last couple of months. So I'm not 100% sure about that, but we will see. So last thing that I want to do is fill in my totals category, which you guys know that I have here. So I'm not gonna put anything for my income, but I am going to put my variable expenses which are these right here so the total for my variable expenses I had budgeted $535.99 and I'm going to put that so $535.99 okay and then my fix it was $1,081 with 99 cents I don't know why the pen does that. Okay. And then $1,081.99. Okay, so in total, it's going to be the same exact thing for my budget and actual for this month, just because, like I mentioned, I'm doing the whole rolling over the cash thing. And I'm really excited to see if that's going to be working for me. Let me know if you do that method, because I know a lot of people do that um, on Instagram. So the total for my budgeted as well as my actual for my expenses was 1617 with 98 cents. So the way I figure out my income is I put an expected amount as well as my actual amount for my actual job, which is my hourly job, and then just do sort of a variance for that, as well as I do have variable income. So as you guys know, I do have a variable income spread here. So my variable income sources for this month are YouTube and share a sale. I think I'm going to go ahead and put my family here because they did end up giving me a bit of money to pay a bit of my card because I did buy my Peru flight ticket with that. So I am going to go ahead and add that there. So what I'm going to do is put my estimated which I really like having a, a variance section for my variable income just because variable income does vary a lot month to month so it's nice to see sort of how I'm doing with that so I want, I'm going to put my estimated amount and then my actual amount for my variable income and I'm going to total those up and then after I'm going to go ahead and subtract all of my business expenses which are all of these right here so once I subtract these from these right here I can go ahead and bring that number to my actual section so I'll go ahead and bring put my actual hourly income my actual variable income add those up put them right here and subtract with my expenses from this so yeah I wasn't supposed to do this I'm just going to go ahead and get my um, correction tape because I'm, I still have to wait um, to see what my income is. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I'm so funny. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. 
Okay, so that's just how it's going to be looking for now. And then whatever I have left over is going to go towards my February savings, which is going to help me pay off those $1,000 that I'm planning on paying off towards this credit card for the month of May. So stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be my March week one check-in. I'm excited to show you guys how the whole rolling over process is gonna go and explain to you guys sort of the savings challenge that I have. I went ahead and showed you guys my variable income, um, but I didn't have any other expenses, which is why I didn't say anything. And then I do have my sinking funds. So. If you guys would have seen my March Thinking Funds video, then you guys know what my starting balances are, which are pretty much the same. I didn't use any of these. So I'm going to go ahead and update this really quick. So Amazon Prime, I didn't spend anything. Cart maintenance, nothing. Medical, nothing. I thought I was going to spend money for the medical, but since there was a physical, I didn't have to pay a co-payment for that. And for new car, nothing was going out. And then for Valentine's Day, I did use $17.88. And as you guys know, I did take out the rest of the money, which was $30, which I'm going to be using towards the $1,000 amount that I'm planning to achieve to pay my debt. So I am going to put that we took out the whole force, $47.88. So now I can go ahead and add all the minuses, which is 297.88. So then my ending for Amazon is $10. I had already calculated this before doing my March thinking funds, if you guys are wondering, because I usually know by the end of the month if I'm going to be using these categories or not. So yeah. So then I have left over $60. Cart maintenance. 35 for medical, 260 for my new car, and then I have nothing left over for my Valentine's Day, so I can go ahead and add those up. So that all together is 365, which is actually the starting balance that I did have for my March sinking funds as you guys can see so everything does match up and I do all of this ahead of time obviously in, in a mock sinking funds but I do want to go ahead and just show you that to let you guys know that I didn't spend anything else for my sinking funds as well as my variable income which is great because I did have quite a few business expenses as you guys can see right there Obviously for my Etsy sticker shop, I do have sort of a file and a notebook where I do write all of my expenses for that. I am going to go ahead and bring my income to March because I am making some revenue from that and I do want to go ahead and make that sort of an amount that I'm going to be adding towards paying off my debt as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys did, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. If you guys have any other questions for me, go ahead and comment them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys are not subscribed already. I will leave everything that I use in this video linked down below for you guys and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.